Here with Concordia head wrestling coach Levi Calhoun to preview the 2018-19 wrestling season. And as we record this, it's maybe about a week and a half from the, the first actual official uh, tournament of the season. And um, let's just start with, with yourself. Obviously, it's a new thing for you as a head coach. Uh, what have you enjoyed most about being the head coach so far? Um. Well, yeah, it's definitely been different. You know, I've been in this league NAI a long time, and I've done a lot of the things I'm doing already as an assistant. But I guess just being able to put um, my own stamp on it, my own spin on things, I've learned a lot from a lot of people. Um, I've worked for four different head coaches. I've learned something from all of them, and um, that kind of allowed me to develop my own way of doing things, my own philosophy, and my own way of um, approaching my guys. And so I guess the coolest part is just being able to come in and say, you know, this is the product I'm going to put forward and this is how we're going to do it. Well, you have uh, assistant coaches, as we, we've talked about before, that are, are both graduates right. of this program now. Like, How has that synergy continued to develop between your, yourself and, and Coach Lule and Coach Smith? Well, obviously Coach Lule, I, I feel, I mean, he's a first year, I guess, full-time assistant coach, but I feel like he's one of the best in the country at what he does, and he always has been, whether he was a was one of the best in the country when he was wrestling and now uh, best in the country as a GA and now he's best in the country as a full-time I feel like just because of his work ethic. So to have somebody that works the way that he does on our staff is a blessing. Um, to have somebody on our staff that loves Concordia Bulldog wrestling at Concordia University as much as he does is a blessing. Um, so so with, with Coach Lule, um, he's not a guy I have to micromanage, he gets work done, you know, um, and, and it's, it's awesome. And, and then Coach Smith, obviously, uh, first year as an assistant coach, a grad assistant, and again, we couldn't be any more blessed to have a guy like him. He's constantly working. He's been on the recruiting trail hard and um, always asking what more he can do um, and willing to learn. Um, and Coach Lule has been a very instrumental in mentoring him as well. Um, so they're passionate. Um, they get on the mat and they work out with the guys, and you know um, they may take their lumps at least. Uh, uh, Lule might not want to admit it, but he may get taken down a time or two from these guys. But but they, I mean, I'm just I'm just so I feel like I have one of the hardest working staffs in the country, and I, I don't. I mean, it's it's just uh, it's a blessing for sure. Well, you you kind of mentioned already the experience you have with with NAI wrestling, and, and the sport has has grown in the NAI. Yeah. What what have you seen as the biggest positives? Is the way the, with the way the sport has evolved in the NAI? Yeah, um, well, you know, a few years ago, wrestling was taken out of the Olympics. We had to fight to get it back. And <clears throat> since that point, I think wrestling's grown as a whole um, throughout the entire country. You know, world championships are going on right now, um, and it's, it's bigger than it ever was. <clears throat> the NAI, again, fastest growing division in wrestling, and um, they're very supportive of wrestling. And I've seen, you know, I've been to seven different NAI national championships, and every year there's something new and something different and more fans and um, more you know, opportunities for the athletes to, to have a, a good experience at the championships, which has been awesome. Um, you know, ESPN covering the finals is big. Um, so it continues to grow, and I, I love the NAI, man. I, I, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for a lot of kids in all sports. Um, you know, I did, I did two sports in college in the NAI, you know, and it was just a great opportunity for me, and I wouldn't take any of it back. So um, I'm very thrilled to be in the NAI, and I, and I love the NAI. Well, uh, as far as your team this year, might as well start with the returning national qualifier with, with DeAndre Cherry. And yeah. I think he's one of those guys you definitely don't want to get caught in the wrong position with yeah. his ability to, to pin people. Yeah. What is it about him that makes him such a dangerous opponent to go against? He's got a different mentality, you know. Um, he may not be technically the most sound wrestler, but, but he works hard. <clears throat> wrestles with a lot of passion and wrestles with a lot of fire um, when he gets on top of somebody that's where he's dangerous obviously it's no secret you know um, he's a dangerous wrestler on top and uh, they, his nickname is psycho that's what they call him because um, when he gets on top he kind of goes into a different mode so um, you know we're obviously working on honing the other parts of his game but he's just a fun wrestler to watch because he will fight through every position um, and he'll give you his all every time he gets on the mat Psycho's probably not a bad nickname for a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there, there's some other upperclassmen. Uh, we, we, but right before we recorded this interview, we had Walker Fisher in here, and some guys like that will probably be disappointed if they don't get to, to nationals this year. But what is the outlook for some guys like him and 
and Cameron Devers and oh, Josh right. Nelson, those oh, guys that sure. have been in this program. Yeah, well, Walker, first of all, um, just a great leader, um, leader by example, vocal leader. You know, he's the leader in the classroom. Um, I would love to see him make a mid trip to the national tournament. He's been close. Um, he's a guy that came in and probably wasn't the most talented, but he was the hardest worker, and he's developed himself into a, a contender now. Um, so I'm excited to see him. It being a lot for me, um, just personally, to see him to see him uh, make a trip to the national tournament, and go compete, to be on the podium. Um, Cam Devers, again, two-year starter. He's a junior. Um, he's been right on the edge there. He's beaten a lot of guys um, that've been to the tournament, beaten a couple guys that've been on the podium, but just hasn't quite punched his ticket to go. Um, he continues to stay focused. Um, I'm again, I'm excited to see him compete. He's a strong kid. Uh, he's got a high motor. Uh, always willing to learn. Um, Josh Nelson, again, another couple year starter, has qualified before, did, just fell short last year. Um, we're expecting a lot of good things out of him. And I've got a lot of other guys, too. I mean, there's at 184 in particular, um, Darren Miller and Tyler Jorgensen. T Darren Miller's a junior, saw a lot of action in varsity last year. Um, and then Tyler Jorgensen will be a sophomore. Um, those three guys will be at 184, one of them probably wrestling 97 at some point. Um, but those three guys are. are are very solid leaders in the room and, and very talented. All three of them have potential to be on the podium. So, um, <clears throat> got up and down the lineup, we got a lot of guys. So uh, I'm excited to get to work for sure. How, how about some of the, the newcomers that yeah. maybe uh, people familiar with the program haven't yet seen wrestle at all, or, or yeah. some guys that have redshirted? Yeah. Uh, who are some guys? We got a few. I got first and foremost uh, Alberto Garcia. Um, He's uh, a junior out of Palomar Junior College. We've got a lot of guys from Palomar, but um, he's uh, he's one of those guys that's tough to beat just because he has a different style. But he's one of those guys that I feel like has the potential to be on top of that podium. Um, so we're, he's been working very hard. Uh, two guys that came out of red shirt: Isaiah Burks out of Hemet, California. He'll be a 57s this year. Um, we're expecting a lot of good things out of him again. Um, one of the hardest workers in the room uh, in the year every weekend, getting extra workouts in. And then Michael Stan out of Temecula Valley, California. He's uh, he'll be at heavyweight this year as a redshirt freshman. Um, another guy we're excited to see get to work and, and finally get into a varsity varsity role. Um, as far as our newcomers, we have one transfer, Zach Moister again from Palomar. Um, he'll be 141, 133. We're seeing where he's going to fall right now. Um, another kid that uh, is going to make an immediate impact. Um, immediate impact guys as far as freshmen go. Uh, first and foremost, I think Mario Mario Ibarra. Uh, Scotts Bluff, Nebraska is a 125 pounder. Um, the kid is, is is one of those guys that came in and didn't didn't act like a freshman. He hasn't been acting like a freshman. He's come in and gone to work, put his nose down, and um, and he works and he he looks like a senior in the room right now, which is exciting. You know, you don't see that a lot with freshmen coming in. A lot of guys come in out of high school and are timid. Mario hasn't been that way. John Fascio is another guy, 25 from California, that's going to be fighting for that spot. Those two guys are going to be battling. He's been working hard, um, you know. And then, and then we've got a lot of different. Uh, our freshmen, um, they've been working hard, and we've got some guys that might be able to bump into that lineup. Uh, we'll have to see how things shake out. But um, again, we've got. I'm excited about our lineup and the guys that we have. So. Well, any time uh, there's a new head coach, usually yeah. that coach wants to, in some ways, maybe put their their stamp on the program. What what maybe were some of the big things you've wanted to instill this yeah. preseason? Sure. I mean, I, there's not a lot of things that change drastically, you know. Um, but um, I think a uh, big thing I did early was just team building, and and not necessarily like doing activities and stuff, but just talking to each other, uh, talking to each other about our lives, about our past, about where we've been through, and and about what our aspirations are, um, just talking teammate to teammate. And I think that was really important. We did that really early. Um, and it kind of gave a, gave the guys a little different perspective on who their teammates are. Um, and kind of opened those doors, a icebreaker, stuff like that. Um, just sitting down and talking to each other man to man, I think is important uh, in building those team team relations. Um, you know, preseason was a little different. We did a lot of a lot of fun things too. We, we try to have fun, wrestling's tough. Um, we gotta have fun. We did big slip and slide. We do, you know, we go play games and, uh, and then we get down to work and we work hard to get ready to go. So, yeah, it's been a good preseason. And I think the guys are buying in. Um, they all know me. You know, it wasn't like a huge transition where it was a new guy coming in, which was big. They all knew who I was um, and knew what I was about and knew how I did things. So. Well, it, um, it's obviously really early still, but when, when you evaluate your roster, I mean, how does it kind of lean as far as uh, what your strengths are? 
with the duels compared to tournaments? Uh, is it too early? Well, hopefully it is early. Yeah, you know, there's so many things that can happen. Um, at this point, I feel like we might be, a, you know, a little stronger in the tournament wise, but. Like I said, again, there's no. It's hard to predict those types of things. We're gonna have a strong dual team. I mean, we're gonna, bottom line, we're gonna have guys that go out and fight, and we're gonna have guys that go out and compete, and that's all I ask, right? You know, I want guys to go out, and, um, compete for seven minutes, and I, I think we have a full roster of guys that, that are gonna do that, regardless of who's out there at what weight. Um, so that's what I'm most excited about. Are there, you've, you have a, a good feel of, of what your conference competition is like now. Uh, do you talk a little bit about what your expectations are from that standpoint, or is that uh, kind of far off, too? With this? No, I mean, I don't think it's ever far off. I mean, if you're competing, your goal is to win, right? So we talk about it, our goal is to win conference, and it's no secret. Um, I feel like if that's not your goal, then what are we doing, right? We should be, we should be working to win titles. Um, a guy should be working to win individual GPAC titles and individual national titles, and if they're not doing that, what are we doing, right? So um, I told the guys every time you should be wanting to get better, you should want to be the best. Um, every time you walk in the every time you walk in the room, one percent better every day, or what's the point of being here, right? So so yeah, absolutely, our goal is to be back on top of the conference uh, and nationally relevant. How did maybe? the way last year went motivate them a little bit uh, because it, it wasn't quite the same as the previous sure, three yeah. years. Yeah, I think it kind of made me a wake-up call a little bit and we need to continue to work. Um, you know, previous uh, Coach Bo brought this team from nothing up to where it was and, and did some great things and then, um, you know, we got we had some lumps last year and uh, I think the guys maybe kind of woke up and said, oh, we need to keep working. Um, you can get into a you know, get content with how things are going when you're expected to win all the time, you know, and, and then maybe some things kind of fall off. So I feel like maybe we got a kick in the rear a little bit, and uh, hopefully we're, we're going to be starting back up on that upswing of, of getting back into GPAC dominance, which is um, what we should be known for.